Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is a draft that I did at the very end of NHL 22 and I just really liked it. So I want to try it again here on NHL 23 and see how it goes this time around. I don't remember how either of these went on NHL 22, so I would have to go back and watch it again to get a refresher. Hopefully this one goes better, I think. Unless the last one went really well, then hopefully this one does the same. Saying that I hope this one goes better is the safe bet because, I mean... How often do the drafts really do that well? And on top of that, even if it did do well, it could probably still do better. But then that sort of makes the expectation that the last one was awful. And like I said, I don't know how it went. I can't remember. All I know is that the actual draft part was fun. So I'm going to do it again, like I just said. I also forgot to randomize the team on play now, so we're going to do it here. Hopefully, we get a team that we don't use very often, but it seems to be the same teams over and over again. Seattle Kraken. I feel like we haven't really landed on that much with random. Maybe that's what I gotta do. I gotta catch the game off guard, you know? Like, don't do the 3-2-1 or whatever. Just mid-sentence. Stop and see where I go. We're gonna get pick number 20. That's just, again, a random shot in the dark. But let's see if I'm even close. Why? Why? I have to take a young player as well because... We can't, you know, <laughs> we can't take a player younger than our first pick. I want to take Tage Thompson because that contract is ludicrous. 1.4 million and he's 88 overall, but then Kachuk is two years younger, which gives us that extra padding. I think I have to. Oh, you know what? Our picks are almost back to back. So I could skip 23 and go straight for Tage at 24 after. I get Brady Kachuk. Ooh, I could also take ADB, who's 89 overall, and he is also only 24. I really want to take Tage, but I can't justify it. I mean, the, the salary, though, maybe I can be justified after all. Simply for the fact that I feel like I've drafted ADB before, and I am quite confident that never in my life have I taken Tage Thompson. Let's go for him. So 24 is the new bar. And we could take Gerard, who is also 24. 5 million, 86 overall defenseman. I think that's probably our best bet. It's the first 24-year-old player I've come across. We also have Chronic. Hmm. There's Drake Batherson. Okay, so we actually have some decent players here still. Sergachev! I'm going for Sergachev. See, this is one positive to having an extremely late draft pick, is that we're basically back-to-back. -back. So I just got... Sergachev, and I could take Gerard now. However, I won't be doing that because Sergachev is left-handed and Hironik is right-handed. So, sorry, but the decision has been made. Welcome to the team. I hope that you do well. <laughs> Erickson Eck. That'd be a good reason to jump to 25. We also have Noah Hannafin. I feel like this is going way better than I expected, and I don't know why. However, I also feel that I've had that same feeling a lot recently, and then when I actually go put the lines together and try to put the team on the ice, I'm like, wow, we suck. I will, however, be selecting Erickson Eck. 85 overall, and that means that the new limit is 25. And with that being said, I will also be taking Hannafin. Oh boy, what have we done? Flurry's probably gonna be around for a while, but the only problem is, I don't know, yeah, like, 37. That's the problem. We have 28 and 29, which I might have to make the jump for. We could take Ned, but that one overall for some reason seems like a difference maker. So I think I'm going to try to take a player right now that's 26 or 27, and then I'll come back for Elvis. Defense wins championships. He's 28. Just to double check, Merzlikens is 28, right? Okay, so we will still be able to take him. Montour, right-handed defenseman is our next selection. We currently have three forwards. That's problematic. And our goalie is also only... I thought he was gone. That scared me so much. We really have to start drafting some forwards here. And what better way to kick off the forward streak than with Ayafalo? I'm also going to take Ryan Strom, who will bump us up to 29. But I think at this point, from what I've seen anyway, it is worth the one... <laughs> I was about to say one overall increase, but... No, it is worth the one-year increase. Victor Arvidsson, 29. He is a right winger, which we currently have none of, by the way. All right, go on then, Vicky. How are we looking cap-wise? So we have $31 million remaining, and we've drafted 11 players so far. Okay, so we're doing all right. Barkley Goudreau is 29 and making 3.6, which isn't too bad. Another left winger, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. We'll just play them wherever. Yeah, let's go ahead and take Barkley. I'm going to skip 30 and go straight to 31 so that we can take Andre Palat. And then I will remain at 30 so that we could take Marcus Foligno. For some reason, I feel like I, I, I'm probably tripping, but 
in my head, I said we'll remain at 30, but I think I meant to say 31. Unless I did say 31. I guess I'll find out when I'm editing this. Jensen's only making 2.5, and he's 82 overall. We don't have to go up in the age at all, so I think that's going to be a good pick for us. We do, however, only have $16 million left, and we still have to take five more players. I kind of lost my place. We're still at 31, right? Yes. Cam Talbot at 35. You know, if he stays around... Okay, so I have, I have Craig Anderson, no matter what. No one's taking this man, which is criminal, by the way. But if all else fails, I could always have him as a backup. So I'm going to try to get Talbot in a minute. Because before him, I'm going to <laughs> fill the thrill. He's 34. It is a bit of a jump, but oh well. It is what it is. Are you kidding me? There's no way. You're making this up. I'm actually being trolled. So now we just need our backup goalie, a left-handed defenseman, and two forwards. And they also have to be 34 or older. Six million dollars? Why not? Kyle Lockpozo will be our next selection. Edler's only making 750k, so I'm very tempted to take him right now. I don't really see a reason not to. We're getting into the very, very late stage of this draft, so I think that that's going to be a very solid player to have on our third defensive pair. So we need one more forward, and I believe 36. All right. Do we have a very physical player remaining that fits the bill? I think we're going to. Oh no, we- No! Really? Alright, well my bad, dropped the ball on that one. I really want to take Craig Anderson, but Jonathan Quick is just sitting right there at 36. One overall better, so does it really make that much of a difference? Probably not. But, I'm still gonna do it. For the simple fact that he has 90 discipline and 85 face-offs, Stasny will be the final selection for- Who are we again? The Kraken. That's who we are. I'm genuinely still upset about that Talbot pick. One before us! Who at EA Sports said, hey, if this guy's drafting, screw him over. Because the thing is, I wouldn't be upset if he went 15 picks before. It's the fact that he was one before us. Wow, our chemistry looks amazing. The grinder playmaker grinder combo. Elite. We definitely don't have a lot of X factors and abilities on this team, so hopefully those don't really weigh into the simulation too much. I also just noticed that our defensive pairs all have the same overall. Phil the Thrill's about to feed this year. This guy's putting up points. In net, we have Elvis backed up by Johnny, so we have two good goalies, but we don't have a great goalie. I'm really torn with trying to predict how this team is going to do. You know what? I think we're going to make the playoffs. I just have a weird suspicion that we will. So I'm going to say that Tage gets the most points. And he's going to put up a total of 70. We're not going to get a whole lot of points, but we are going to shut it down defensively. And we're going to get a grand total of 43 wins. I'll see you in the playoffs. Come on, boys. Fire me vertical. Don't let me down. Oh, boy. Oh, never mind. That's a dub. Let's go. Okay, cut. I know it's very early in the season. Things aren't going well. I'm just going to do preferred lines. On a side note, one of y'all should fire your coach so that I can have a look and see if they're better than ours. Our record's kind of looking like it's going to have to be one of those... Really relying on a weak division kind of records, you know? Kind of buzzing here recently. Let's go. Definitely starting to improve. I will enter the deadline. We are third in the division right now. 33 wins. I did not go into the trade deadline. I skipped it by accident. But, oh well. It is what it is. Bertuzzi headed to Chicago in exchange for two seconds and Quinn. Also, Val Nachushkin headed to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for Brant Clark and a third. I'm kind of surprised by the fact that nobody has fired their coach yet. Normally, I get, you know, two or three pop-ups throughout the year. Haven't seen a single one this time. 42 wins and we have a bunch of games left. Oh my word, we're going to be in the playoffs. We're definitely in. Let's go! Exceeded my expectations, lads. Just shy of 100 points is good enough for third in the Pacific Division. That's where we were at the trade deadline, and that's where we finished. We also finished seventh in the league. So third in our division and seventh in the league. We had a pretty strong top two teams, clearly. Tampa Bay Lightning missing at 12th in the league. That hits a little too close to home. If you watch my other videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Winnipeg Jets win the President's Trophy. Let's have a look at their roster. McDavid, okay, I've seen enough. All right, fine, we'll look at the whole roster. They got Varlamov and Nett, Jones and Orlov, and then they got Flurry, Klingberg, other Flurry, and Shen. Nice. Konechny playing with Brett and McDusty. He's sure with Hayes and Toffoli. Yeah, they have a good team. They do. I'll give it to them. Andre Palat got the most points with 65. We are a very defensive team. Brady Kachuk didn't even break 60. Tage Thompson had 58. Eric Sinek had 52. Same with Strom. I'm fine with it. You know what? We don't need a lot of points to win. If we want to shut other teams down instead of 
having offense as our defense, I'm okay. Merzlikens went 36, 27, and 8 with two shutouts and a 918. And then Jonathan. 9-1-1 one, one with a 938-185. What a year. He didn't play a whole lot of games, but the ones he did, he made them count. Bronick had the most points with 30, and then we got a trio of 25. Sergachev, Montour, and Hannafin all put up the same. McDusty led the league with 103. He also had 54 goals, which looks like it might be a Rocket Richard season from him as well. Matthews managed to get 100, splitting it evenly at 50 apiece. He did, in fact, get the Rocket Richard. There wasn't someone that just put up a ton of goals with basically no assists. Who led for game-winning goals? It was Ranton, and he had 13. I don't know why I just randomly decided to look at these stats. Who had the most time on ice? John Carlson. Holy. Braden Shen had the most hits with 189, but Timo's right there. What's this one? Takeaways. Interesting stat. Pasta. I've normally never come over this far. Quinton Byfield with the best shooting percentage at 22.7. Barlamov led the league for dubs. He had a 909 save percentage and a 271 GAA. Very... Consistent with Kemper, who also had a 909, but he had a 277, 42 wins. So basically, just very, very similar all around years from these two. Jake Ottinger played phenomenal 40, 14, and 12 with seven shutouts and a 926. And then Kata Hat, 921 with 10 shutouts. Yossi led defenseman with 70, and then we've got 68 from Carlson, 67 from Mori, and it is playoff time. Let's find out how we do here. Our round one opponent is the LA Kings. Hopefully we don't have a first round exit. If we can at least make it past round one, I'll be very happy. Okay, that's a good start. And I'll sim up to this game here. Oh no, yes, we could win without going to game seven, and we do. It is time to take on the Golden Knights, the other most recent expansion. Why? I feel like these two just always encounter each other in all my videos. I'm gonna assume that there's no sweeps in this series, and I'm gonna sim the first four games. I have no idea what happened. That's what happened in the first one. Okay, well, you know what they say when you assume things. Who's it gonna be? Oh, the team that took us down goes on to win the Stanley Cup. Rockford will take the AHL title. The Knights only had 90 points, finished fourth in the Pacific, one below us. Their team consisted of Eichel, so they brought him back to play with Everly and Robertson. Oh, wow. Is that a full line of snipers? This guy's out here doing the sniper-only draft. Then they got Besser, Lizotte, and Sonny Milano. Okay, fair enough. Peterson in net with Talbot, you weasels. Well, let's look at some player stats for the playoffs. We got nine points, almost point a game from Tage, eight from Palat, Strom put up seven, Kachuk, six. I don't know where he is offensively, but not there. E. Elvis got beat up in the playoffs, 888, 354. Freddie Anderson had a 930, and then Bennington had a 931. Cal did end up with the most wins, though. 16 makes sense because his team did win the Stanley Cup. I have no idea why I said it like that, but let's move on. Miro led defenseman with 18 points. Petrie had 15, and then Drysdale and Tony D both had 10. And what a run from Eichel. 32 points in 22 playoff games. Robertson had 28. Yeah, that line must have just been disgusting. Brock Besser had 20, and then David Perron had 20 in 18 games. Still really good. McDusty had 19 in 12. We know the team awards here, but what about the individual trophies? Oh yeah, that's right. Connor absolutely cleaned up. So gets the first two there. Yossi with the Norris. Pasta gets the Lady Bing, and then Paterka gets the Calder. Ooh, I like that. Eichel takes the Con Smythe home. Ottinger with the Vesna, and the Jennings goes to You See What I See. Zadorov takes the Masterton home. Bass gets the Jack Adams. O'Reilly with the Selkie, and then McDusty gets the Rocket Richard and the Ted Lindsay. Here is your playoff tree. That's how it all went down. And yeah, that sweep in round two, devastating. But I did say that if we make it past round one, I'll be happy. And I wasn't fully sure we were even going to make the playoffs. So the fact that we even got in to begin with was already a good start. But anyways, obviously now we have to do the draft where the next player cannot be older. Cannot be older. So be on the lookout for that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And on that note, I will see you soon.